What's up smart homers, my name's Aaron, and in this video, I wanna show you a bunch of smart bathroom ideas that I've implemented in my bathroom. Now, I'm not gonna pretend that all of these automations are gonna stay due to spouse approval, but I hope they give you some ideas for stuff that you could implement in your smart home. Now, Home Assistant is my smart home platform of choice, so most of the devices are gonna work with Home Assistant. Also, I'll be leaving links to all the devices that I use in the description of this video, so if you're interested in buying any of those products and you use those links, I get a small commission and no extra cost to you. The first thing I want to show you is this Zigbee light switch. What I originally got it for was the three relays in it. You'd be surprised at how hard it is to find a three relay smart switch. These are typically used to control a bathroom light that has a main light, a night light, and a ventilation fan. I have a simple automation with this switch so that if the fan is manually turned on, it's turned off after 30 minutes. I actually have some more complex automations that I'll show later on with the bathroom fan. Since I got the switch though, we've actually changed to a fan slash light combo that doesn't have a night light. So I've repurposed that middle switch to act as a remote to toggle my under vanity light strip as a night light. Speaking of those lights, under the front edge of the vanity, I've installed a side emitting LED strip. The strip is oriented so that the LEDs face upwards, illuminating that little cavity and reflecting down in a really diffuse way but you don't see the strip itself, which is really cool. Of course, that strip is powered by a controller that runs WLED, which is a software made specifically for individually addressable LEDs. This means that I could not only set a single solid color for that light strip, but I can control the individual LEDs on that strip. This means I can do various effects and some really cool automations that I'm gonna show you later on. The strip is mainly used for a nightlight automatically coming on at 8 p.m but it can also be used as a notification indicator or even a timer progress bar. If I set a timer on the Echo Flex, I can have that strip run down like a progress bar until the timer is supposed to go off. So for example, maybe I set a timer for 20 minutes and I allow that to run down while I'm taking a 20 minute shower. I can easily take a look at the strip that's acting as a progress bar and it gives me a visual indicator of how much time I've left. The controller I'm using is one by Atom that actually has a dual channel output, meaning you can control two strips, and it also has a built-in microphone so it can react to music. It's a little overpowered for what I'm actually using it for here, but I'll be covering this controller in a comparison video in a few weeks. The beauty of WLED for me is that it integrates with Home Assistant, and that means I can toggle the strip using this middle switch. My bathroom has an electric baseboard, even though most of my house is hot water baseboard, so it has its own individual thermostat. To control it, I'm using a MISA electric baseboard thermostat, and what's nice about this is that it measures both temperature and humidity in the room. Not only can I control the temperature in Home Assistant, but I can also use the humidity sensor to trigger an automation. When someone starts taking a shower and the humidity rises above a set point, the fan comes on and it stays on until the humidity drops below that set point. It's really nice having a temperature and humidity sensor built into the room that doesn't require battery because that means less batteries to replace on battery replacement day. In my other bathroom and in my office, I actually use the Miros electric baseboard thermostat, which I personally like better for the UI and for some of the features in the app and how it works with Home Assistant. However, I think the MISA looks pretty good. When we renovated this bathroom, we put a new vanity in with a marble top and we couldn't find a mirror that fit between the marble top and the lights that existed on the wall. Lowe's or Home Depot really don't have custom sized mirrors and all the mirrors are super expensive. Thankfully, Amorho sent me an email asking if I'd like to try out one of their smart mirrors and they have so many sizes so I was easily able to find one that fit that space. I went with this one, a 30 by 60 version with the black border. I did have to flip the vanity lights to fit it, but in a second you'll see why I really don't need them anymore anyway. Installation does require an outlet behind the mirror, so I had to add one, but once that was there, it was very easy to install. These mirrors aren't smart in the sense of being connected to Home Assistant. You might call this some low tech instead of high tech, but they have some touch controls that I really like. You can turn on the light, which includes a front light and a back light, and it can be adjusted between cool and warm white. You can also adjust the brightness of the light, and the button on the left is a defog button. 
The mirror has a heating element that warms up the surface of the mirror and removes the fog from your shower. And this is really handy if you're in a rush and you need to use that mirror to get ready for work or whatever else. Big thanks to Amorho for sending me this mirror to use in my bathroom, and I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. Next, I have the Xiaomi soap dispenser, which I also absolutely love, and you might not consider this high-tech either. Some people complained when I posted a YouTube short about it that it's not smart because it doesn't connect to a smart home platform, but it's smart enough for me because it uses a motion or proximity sensor to detect your hand and then dispenses the perfect amount of soap. You just gotta fill it up with some foaming soap. I'll leave a link in the description for the soap that I use, and then you can go ahead and use the soap dispenser just as you want. A single tap of the button on the top deactivates the motion sensor so that your kids aren't using up all the soap, and then tapping it once again reactivates it so that it functions. What I love about this is no more having to press down on the hand pump of a soap dispenser and then it falls over because it's not very full, or you get way too much and your kids are smearing that stuff all around the sink. Plus, as you can see, Xiaomi products look really good. This portion of this video is sponsored by Habata, featuring their E3 Pro Ergonomic Office Chair. This chair comes with an optional footrest that pulls out and flips up into place for maximum comfort. This chair honestly may have the most adjustments of any I've ever seen, with its 6D adjustable armrests, a seat that slides in and out, three zone elastic lumbar support that feels like you're being hugged when you sit down, an adjustable backrest that moves up and down, a 4D biaxial headrest that allows you to get your head in the perfect position for max comfort, and the chair is made of a durable and breathable mesh material made of nylon and yarn which makes it very comfortable to sit in. When you get this chair adjusted just the right way, it is so comfortable to sit in, you feel well supported, and you almost want to fall asleep. It feels like it's made of some real high quality material, and you're not afraid of anything getting on it that you can't clean off because it's made out of that mesh. You can see me here sitting down in the chair, flipping out the footrest, and kicking back and relaxing, reclining the full 140 degrees. You're practically laying down. I've been loving using this as my office chair, and believe it or not, I'm editing this video sitting on it. Thanks to Habata for sponsoring this video. Next, we have our Smart Scale, which is made by Withings. If you're not familiar with them, they have a lot of health-related products, including their really popular bed mat. The Withings Scale can track your weight as well as BMI, and what's awesome is that it works with Home Assistant, so I can trend my weight there. If you're looking for a Smart Scale, Withings is a pretty great brand to start with. However, their integration with Home Assistant does require cloud connectivity, meaning you are relying on their cloud services to get that data into Home Assistant. Because of that cloud connectivity, it's also a bit slow, so stepping on the scale and recording your weight, it does take a little while before that actually ends up at Home Assistant. If you're looking for a Bluetooth scale, I also have this Xiaomi scale that I use in my other bathroom. It connects to Home Assistant via Bluetooth, and while it's simple, it has a really clean look, so if you're looking for something that doesn't rely on cloud connectivity, this one is a great option. It also updates in Home Assistant really quick because there's no cloud interface in between. Each time I weigh myself on the scale, it's tracked in Home Assistant, and I have an automation that announces on the Echo Flex, encouraging me if I've lost weight and scolding me a little bit if I've gained weight. Great job, you lost 1.5 pounds. Speaking of the Echo Flex, this is a device that isn't sold anymore, but is one of my absolute smart home favorites. It's a mini plug-in Amazon Assistant device. It's really useful in our bathroom because if one of our young kids needs help, they can drop into another speaker and get one of their parents' attention. If you can't find an Echo Flex on eBay or somewhere else, you can always get the wall mount for Echo Dots that they have on Amazon. I'll leave a link to this one in the description. You might say that this next one is taking it a little bit too far, and this has to do with smart toothbrushes. I actually picked up the Xiaomi T500 smart toothbrush, and I mostly got it for the price. It works with Home Assistant via Bluetooth, and it tells you how long your last session of brushing was, percentage of your brush head use, and toothbrush status on or off. It also tells you the remaining battery. This data can be used to trigger automations, but this toothbrush was a little bit flaky and didn't always communicate with Home Assistant right away and sometimes didn't at all. If you want one that's nicer and much more reliable, the Oral-B IO series are a decent price and they work well with Home Assistant. 
One thing to note with both of these brushes is that they are BLE devices, meaning they're just broadcasting information over Bluetooth. And if your neighbor is in close proximity and is running Home Assistant, they may be able to pick up your toothbrush data. This specific one that I'm using here is the Oral-B IO Series 6, which I think is beautiful. It's got this little display on it and it has a lot of cool features, including a little ring around the brush that lets you know when you're done brushing. It even gives you a sad face if your brush session is too short. A really cool automation I did in Home Assistant is one that is triggered when the toothbrush is turned on and starts brushing. When that happens, the LED strip underneath the vanity turns green and then starts counting down like a progress bar for two minutes. When the strip is completely red, it means that your brush time is over and you can stop brushing. Unnecessary, I know, but fun. The last thing I wanna show you is something that I first saw in a Dr. Z's video, and that is an air freshener that I've automated to turn on when someone uses the toilet. So it's really just an air freshener, but it's actually plugged into a smart outlet. And this smart outlet is one made by Eve that I've shown in a previous video. Then on the back of the toilet lid, I have this contact sensor. And when the lid's open, then the contact sensor is closed. And that tells Home Assistant to trigger the automation. The automation turns the smart outlet on, turning on the air freshener. And the air freshener runs until the lid is shut, at which time it waits for a few more minutes and then turns off. Of course, I've made provision for the fact that if the lid is left up for longer than 20 minutes, then the air freshener is just going to shut off. It means someone forgot to put the lid down. One thing I was going to try was to use the Apollo Air 1 sensor, which is an air quality sensor that can actually pick up number twos, but I wasn't able to get my hands on it in time to do this video. I'll definitely try that later on, probably putting the Air 1 up above the cabinet that's right above the toilet, where it's really inconspicuous, but it is picking up whether or not someone used the bathroom number two. I'll leave a link to the Air 1 below as well because this sensor is insanely cool. While this is a smart bathroom tour, I'm likely not keeping everything that I've implemented in this video. Since my smart toothbrush tells me when I've brushed for two minutes, there's really no need for that timer progress bar underneath the vanity. Also, the diffuser automation may be a bit much, and the reality is that my kids leave the toilet seat up way too much, so it's probably gonna end up just not running anyway, but we'll see how that one goes. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this one. I really hope you enjoyed this little smart bathroom tour, and I hope it gives you some ideas for your smart home. If you did like the video, please hit the like button because that lets me know that you did like it and it also pushes it out so other people can see it. If you have some suggestions for your smart bathroom, definitely let me know in the comments section because I'm still looking for different things to implement. Definitely get subscribed if you want to see more videos like this one. And as always, thanks for watching. See ya.